This is Cairo, the capital of Egypt. From here, if we move east, we see the Sahara Desert, an arid landscape with nothing but a few highways crossing along. But these satellite images you're looking at are from 2015. Ever since, a lot has changed, as the Egyptian government is completely transforming this region. What you see here is the construction of a new capital city, right in the middle of the desert. But why are they building a new capital? And why did they choose this unfavorable location for the project? You have probably seen these traffic maps that Google displays for its navigation service where green roads means little to no traffic and red indicates strong congestion. This is how Cairo looks like on those maps in the morning. Traffic has become a real problem, just as the city's growth in general represents a massive political challenge. Of the 104 million inhabitants of Egypt, around 20 million live in the metropolitan area of Cairo. While the government buildings in many of the world's capital cities are bundled together in one place in order to simplify cooperation within the government, the Egyptian ministries are currently spread all across the city. This makes for long distances, congestion and heavy pollution. And even when the ministries are closer together, like around the centrally located Tahir Square, the infrastructure is simply overloaded. Not only are there a number of ministries located, but also the Egyptian parliament, which requires special security measures and sometimes has to be cordoned off. Additionally, located right on Tahir Square is the Mogama. This is the main administrative building in Egypt, where citizen requests are processed. So the political administration is a massive burden for Cairo, a city that is already under growth pressure. The population of Greater Cairo has been increasing rapidly for decades, at a rate at which urban expansion just can't keep up. And it is a development that doesn't only affect Cairo. In fact, the population of the entire country is growing at a rate that is higher than the growth of the world population. And the Egyptian government considers this a key threat to the country's prosperity. As far as housing is concerned, most of Egypt is dominated by the Sahara Desert, which is sparsely populated. This map of population distribution shows most people living along the Nile and in the Nile Delta, where there is water for agriculture and industry, as well as a milder climate and fertile soil. The land for cities to naturally expand is completely exhausted. And since the Nile is the main source of water, accounting for 97% of fresh water in the country, the population growth also leads to a supply problem here. As explained in detail in my video on the conflict between Ethiopia and Egypt, the Egyptian government regards the country's dependence on the Nile as a threat to its national security. As today, Egypt is already suffering from water scarcity. Since the Egyptian government is facing these massive challenges with population growth, it is therefore trying to buy time and has initiated a campaign under the motto Two is Enough, discouraging people from having more than two children as well as making contraceptives more widely available and affordable. But even if politically unwanted, the reality of population growth demands answers. With only one option left, unfavorable as it is. Egypt saw itself forced to build new cities in the desert. Since the 1970s, massive new development projects have been set up around Cairo with the aim of reducing the strain on the capital city. In 1977, construction began on the 10th of Ramadan city. In 1979, on the opposite side of Cairo, the 6th of October city was built. Adjacent to it, in 1995, the Sheikh Zayed city. As well as in the east, the cities of Abur, 
Al Shuruk, Badr, and Medinity, as well as the largest such project to date, New Cairo, which construction began in the year 2000. These cities are not suburbs in the traditional sense, because the intention was not only to relieve Cairo of housing requirements, but rather to establish new separate metropolitan areas with their own local economy. In addition to large industrial complexes, these newer cities also host many internationally oriented schools and universities. The Greater Cairo area is growing at an enormous pace, and it seems that every new project exceeds the previously developed cities both in size and in ambition. Yet still, the project currently under development can hardly be surpassed in terms of ambition. As the government is now creating a completely new capital, east of Cairo and New Cairo. Let's take a look at the plans for this city in detail. First of all, as a new capital, this administrative area was established, which will house all different ministries of the Egyptian government. These will move from their current spread out locations in Cairo to these ministry buildings which extend opposite one another along one central axis. Centrally located is the cabinet building in which the various government ministers can meet to coordinate their work. At one end of the axis there is a circular development in which other national institutions are located including the post office headquarters and the Egyptian central bank. On the other side of the axis is People's Square, which will include the largest flagpole in the world, as well as two open theaters. This square is anchored by a large arc building, the Unknown Soldier Monument, referencing pharaonic architecture and commemorating fallen soldiers. This People's Square will also likely be the setting for future military parades. On the other side of the square, there are two buildings for the two chambers of the Egyptian parliament, the House of Representatives and the Senate. And north of this area is the Presidential Palace, the seat of the head of state of Egypt, which is also the most politically powerful position in the country. This new administrative center may seem straightforward. It resembles a formula that many planned capitals in the world follow, a large area full of grand city squares and wide avenues that demonstrate strength. And yet it is a layout that keeps the country's most important institutions relatively compact together. But where this Egyptian capital certainly stands out from other countries is with the sheer size of one ministry, the Egyptian Ministry of Defense. This is the Octagon. Comprised of 10 buildings, it is the new headquarters of the Egyptian Ministry of Defense as well as the Egyptian military and houses control, analysis and data centers. When completed, this will be the largest defense complex in the world, surpassing the Pentagon in the United States. These buildings are part of an extended area with facilities for employees and military personnel apartment units, places of worship, hotels, schools, hospitals and administrative services, all located in this circular defense district. In a way, this is a city within a city. And the scale of this complex also serves as a strong reminder of the large role the military plays politically in Egypt. Ever since the military overthrow of Mohamed Morsi, the country has been ruled by former general Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. While these two areas are almost exclusively characterized by government buildings, the new capital is by no means intended to serve purely as an administrative center. Rather, the intention is for this city to become a new global center, with a strong economy and vibrant city life. For example, Two ambitious sports centers are being built in the very north and south of the city. In Sports City, there are a number of outdoor fields, as well as a large indoor hall which has already served as the venue for the 2021 World Men's Handball Championship. 
The sports complex in the south of the city, the Egypt International Olympic City, is even bigger. Two indoor stadiums, as well as Olympic complexes for tennis, squash, aquatics, equestrian, and a large national stadium with a capacity of 90,000 spectators, is under construction. The Egyptian government has also publicly signaled interest in applying for hosting global sports events such as the Olympics, as well as the FIFA World Cup. Additionally, large places of worship were built in the new city, including two mosques in the east and west of the city, with the Al Fatah Al Alim now being the largest mosque in the country. Also, a Coptic Orthodox cathedral was built, the Cathedral of the Nativity of Christ, which also is the largest of such in the country. While Sunni Islam is by far the most widespread religion in Egypt, Coptic Orthodox Christians represent the second largest religious group. There are also a number of universities being built across the city, many of them international institutions, as well as the Knowledge City and Knowledge Hub areas, where several learning institutions are bundled together. In line with the country's Vision 2030 initiative, these universities also show that the intent is to create infrastructure that can drive innovation and boost the economy. And what would a capital city be without office and high-rise buildings? These are built in the Central Business District. Here, the construction of the iconic tower is underway, which, when completed, will be the tallest building in all of Africa. And it's just the beginning, because an even taller building is already being planned here, called Oblisco. This tower's design will directly reference the ancient Egyptian obelisk. If completed in 2030, this will be the tallest building in the world, with a height of exactly one kilometer. For housing in the city, the master plan consists of 20 residential centers, with distinct architectural styles. As visible on this satellite image, six of them are already largely completed. And through the entire length of the city, a park six times the size of New York Central Park will meander. The Green River Park is intended to serve as a recreational area, providing shade and encouraging social activities. Along this park, an artificial river will be created, inspired directly by the Nile which flows through the current capital, Cairo. Despite this direct homage, the new and the old capital of Egypt could hardly be more different. With large distances bridged by highways that connect these planned modern districts, the new capital differs from the historical, densely populated city of Cairo. Planned cities like this are fascinating. All these large sports complexes and innovation and finance hubs represent an aspirational plan for what Egypt wants its future to look like. And this planned city can be an indication of how the country navigates the many cultural influences in its society and which it chooses to emphasize. There are, for example, references to ancient Egypt, such as the Ankh symbol, representing life, or the design of the national monument and the proposed Oblisco skyscraper. There are also traditional Islamic references such as the architecture of buildings in the 6th residential district and the grand new mosques being built. And there are influences such as American style suburbs, like the one residential zone located in the east of the city, called La Vista. And then there is Residential Zone 5, which very directly tries to mimic French architectural style. This particular district aims to provide luxury for high-income citizens. Perhaps this odd mix of influences has to do with what appears to be the real core objective of this project overall, which is to be an international city. The planners borrowed ideas from all over the world, and an Olympic sports complex International science hubs and expo centers underline this bold ambition. To create a global city that can solve Egypt's problems at home and look abroad for its future. 
The question will be whether that will work, and how natural growth will shape the city's future once the initial plans are realized. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to subscribe. There are a lot of great new videos currently in production, and you're really helping out in making these documentaries possible.